What's up, guys? Joe and Kevin from You Talking to Me. Hello. We are here to talk about Doctor Strange. I'm wearing the Doctor Strange shirt, if you guys can see. I am not. I'm wearing a plain shirt. Um, <laughs> we're going to do a kind of a deep dive into Marvel um, films right now. We're both fans. We know not everybody is. Um, and we'll, we'll get into that a little bit as we get going here. But uh, just a heads up, this is going to be spoiler heavy for those of you who have not watched Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. If you're those two people that have not seen right. it. Right. Yeah, if, if you're in that group that hasn't made it to the theater yet. And judging by the weekend box office... Almost everyone's seen it now. It made almost half a billion dollars in a weekend. Yeah. Four hundred fifty million, something like that. Right, and that's and that's and that's really worth talking about nuts. here. Yeah. It okay, is. and we're gonna kind of talk, get into why it made that kind of money because I think obviously it was that teaser in the trailer that everybody was speculating who's gonna be in the scene, who's gonna be in this. Let's that's talk it. about the trailer. That's a good place to start. Thank yeah. you for bringing that up because I have to tip my hat to Marvel here because that trailer convinced me yeah. it was a completely different movie than it was. To be and honest. I love that. Yeah, to be honest, I did not really care for the trailer. I mean, like, the trailer looked good, but I was like, oh, okay, this is just another run-of-the-mill Marvel shit. I really... Doctor Strange was never really a character that I cared about. I thought the movie was kind of mid. And honestly, he wasn't really... Like, his movie and his character isn't the most beloved. He's... He's was Tony weird. Stark without the charm and, and personality. And it was just, like, weird <laughs> abs- abstract shapes in it. Yeah, absolutely, but, yeah. yeah. And it was just kind of... It was okay. Really forgettable villains. Yeah, um, which Matt, is, they wasted uh, which Matt is, Mickelson, which is a complete Marvel thing to do. Yeah, but um, when I watched the trailer, and and, and I'm not the only one, um, there was a lot of speculation that the What If series was going to be big because they showed the zombie um, Doctor Strange, they showed Bloody Wanda, which made you think it was Zombie Wanda. Yeah, they showed the the, the Squid thing, so you thought it was going to be the Captain Carter first episode Squid thing. I they about did. That. Yeah. They did a lot in the trailer for this. To make it look like it was going to be very heavily reliant upon what the if? What If series, and it absolutely wasn't. No. Except for showing Captain Carter, sure. it absolutely was not contingent yeah, and, on and, anything and there. And Sinister Strange, right? Right, yeah, yeah, okay. Sinister, yeah, and Sinister Strange. But it, all of it. it. It was more so, you, need to, you don't need to see it, but if you saw it, it would help your experience. Whereas WandaVision was like almost essential. Yeah, I agree. You don't need to see What If to really get the full impact of um, Doctor Strange. But without WandaVision, without the, the entire... The impact is not there. The entire motivation yeah. for the villain in the film is that TV show. Which, <laughs> oh man, is this the best Marvel villain or what, dude? Yeah, Wanda that, killed it, literally. <laughs> she literally was amazing in this movie. My first reaction when I left was, is that Marvel finally got their third villain right out of 29 movies. Yeah. They've had two well, villains... 28. 28 or 29. Uh, regardless, almost right. 30 movies. Almost 30 yeah. movies. Yeah. There have been two villains that I think have really worked, so they went to that well a lot. Thanos and Loki. Other than that, Loki's every... not really a villain anymore. Every, right, Loki's yeah. not even really a villain anymore, but he was a great villain for phase one. Sure. But other than that, they're all so forgettable. I don't, I don't remember who the villain is in Captain Marvel. I don't remember much about the monster yeah. in Xi'an. I think, I, think like, recent. I think it's like Jude Law. Yeah, but it's still, Jude it's Law like, and, and, some, and someone above him. Um, yeah, see, I don't remember what's, that. What's yeah. the name of the villain in Guardians of the Galaxy? The blue guy. Oh, okay, Ronan. I, 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 like, Ronan. Okay. Yeah, I like that guy. I like see, that guy. I, yeah. I, I thought he was perfectly forgettable like every other. Sure, and he was, he was underutilized. That's, the, that's sure. their thing is they don't put... I think, okay, so DC puts a lot of emphasis on their villains in their movies, sure. whereas Marvel does not. They, they are more like hero... And, and I'm okay with that. Which, the mo- yeah, the yeah, movies, the them, movies yeah. all work, but the villains are pretty forgettable. Pretty poor. Yeah. Even right. Ultron, because Ultra, everyone was excited about Ultron being like this right. big, big villain of the MCU, and he just was kind of. Yeah. I mean, out of the almost thirty movies, how many of them do you just have the one guy who's motivated by greed or revenge and is mad at the world and wants to destroy <laughs> everything and everybody? He's like all a, of them. They're all ego. They're all. Um, they're Jack like bridges from Iron Man redone over and over again. They're almost like glorified arms dealers. Yeah, you know what I mean, they like, are. Yeah. It's, it's just Mystic the same ones dealers. repackaged. And this one is a like a, a mother who lost her children, you know. But at the same time, the children never really existed. Yeah, but she maybe, just wants to have her family. But maybe they do because she dreams about them, right. you know. And it's like, oh man, okay. One of the best scenes in the film uh, is when you you first see Wanda. You know, you see her with the kids, and you hear the WandaVision theme, you're like, oh, wow, like, she, she found a way to, to you know, meta- metaphys- metaphysically make her children, right, right. or, like, something worked out, and I was like, that's that's awesome, good for her, and it worked out, and then all of a sudden, boom, she wakes up, and I was like, this movie did not just do that to me. <laughs> I, I literally was, like, starting to tear up, I was like, oh, my God, that was really well done. Yeah, they, like, the trailer showed the fake Wanda, which I thought was great, you know, and yeah, then, yeah. 
uh, pruning the apple trees. Yes, 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 yes. Oh, you need me. Of, to, right, of yeah. course it was magic. Yeah, yeah, And of yeah, course yeah. it was all fake. Yeah. She's already the Scarlet Witch, which we saw kind of at the end of WandaVision. I didn't, yeah, I didn't realize they were going to, like... Because I just figured she's a hero, and when she gets the dark hold, like, okay, she's obviously going to have control over it. She's very powerful. Evil from the beginning of this movie. Oh, right, yeah. from the, right from the beginning. She's the villain. Fucking Sam Raimi loves making movies about evil books, doesn't he? Mm. <laughs> which I was, like, stoked to see that. Because yeah. it, it was, like... Kind of an homage to Evil Dead. <laughs> Very much so. Right, you know, right. we had this conversation before we started recording. Um, we were both worried that it wasn't going to be a Sam Raimi movie. Right. Going you in, I thought it was going to be Sam Raimi doing a multiverse movie where he had... And, and, and the thing that a lot of people talked about going in, right? Mm-hmm. A billion cameos of which was not different characters, which yeah. was wonderfully not the case. Yeah, I'm really glad it wasn't. Mm-hmm. Um, so this movie definitely had his personality in it. Uh, I was kind of... So I remember this movie being announced a few years ago, obviously, and Scott Derrickson was going to come back. I did not realize how into production Derrickson and his writer were before they uh, they cast Raimi. Raimi was, like, hired off the fly, I guess, and they brought in Michael Waldron, who was doing Loki, and they basically had to, like, you know, steer this ship because... Kind of redo it and put Raimi, yeah, put their touch on it. Yeah, exactly. And I was kind of, like, surprised to see that Marvel actually let him have his own personality because you definitely feel all of his sensibilities... Uh, the themes in the film are very similar to, like we said, Evil Dead. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm trying to think of what else I was going to say about that. because, it, Okay, so the scene in the beginning with the wedding. Did right. you get Spider-Man 2 vibes? I didn't, but it makes sense now. Okay, so like it's really, really strange. He does this thing in his superhero films, obviously Spider-Man and a little bit of Dark Man, um, where he, he, he puts like this human characteristic onto these big, fantastic characters. Like... Uh, what's the line from Doctor Strange? He's like, you saved the world, but you couldn't get the girl. Right, And he's yeah. sitting at her wedding, and I'm like, okay. there's something so beautiful about that. Right. You know, he's been to space, he's been to all these fantastic places, and he's just sitting there next to Michael Stuhlberg. And I was very happy to see Michael Stuhlberg. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> yeah. Michael Stuhlberg is a great actor. He's an Academy Award nominated actor. He's done a lot of work I love. And to just bring him back for that one cameo to take one little dig yeah. at uh, Doctor Strange going out. Yeah. Beautiful. And it's like, he made... The most unrelatable superhero, in my opinion, the most relatable. Yeah. You know no, what I mean? They, they, the character sympath- is much more sympathetic in this movie than yeah. at any other point. He's just a normal guy. I mean, like, he literally, they did a show him doing normally him, just a normal guy. He's a fucking wizard. But, like, you know, they show him doing, like, everyday mundane things, which, one, is hilarious because he's wearing, like, everyday outfits and, like, mm-hmm. everyday clothes, and he has, like, this giant fake hair on. Right. It's so funny to me. Just seeing him walk around like yeah. that killed me. And, and, and you're right, because they took a lot of the ego stuff out for him. Yeah. Like, in every other thing we've seen, it's, I'm a badass, and that's how it is. And all of you He's a badass knowledge. surgeon. I'm a, ba- the I'm a badass best. surgeon, yeah. I'm a badass wizard, I'm everything. Yeah. And Stolberg even says, it's like, the best surgeon, the best hero, but you still couldn't get the girl. And all of a sudden, that I feel like that line yeah. really brings him down to earth. And I didn't really realize the first, I might have I might have missed it, I didn't realize that was Christine's wedding, and I was like, oh shit, did they just reveal that like that? Yeah. And I was like, that's pretty good. I was like, all right, Randy. So he he really, he brings an old-fashioned storytelling to, the, to this Marvel film. And I'm like, you know what? This is what these movies need. Sometimes, I don't want to sound like Matthew McConaughey, sometimes you have to step backwards right. to make things feel fresh. And like that's what this was. It, I understand that a lot of these Marvel films are pre and they are like you know being animated as we speak right now for future films that we have no idea. Right. Films that don't even have a director yet. Visual effects are being developed for those movies. And... Sorry, it's my phone. They turned that off real fast, guys. It's embarrassing. But this film, it oddly felt unique in, in, a, in a series of films that feel the same. Yeah. It doesn't feel like movies. They feel like TV shows at this point. I agree. And, and, and this, you know, um, and you and I kind of mentioned this a little bit before I even saw this movie. Um, there have been, that I can think of, three top-notch directors brought in who have done a lot of other work mm-hmm. and were allowed to kind of do their own thing. Taika. Taika Waititi, obviously, with... James um, Gunn. Right, James, th- those three, right? Yeah. Raimi, James Gunn, and Taika Waititi. And those are three of the best Marvel movies, I think. Guardians 1. Was there... You want to give Favreau some credit, too, I think? Because yeah. I feel like... But that's the very beginning. Right. Like, Favreau kind of way. kicked off the yeah, MCU. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure, sure. Um, and he didn't have a huge directing background before that. Or... A little show bit. story running. A little bit, yeah. Did he do... He did Swingers. Oh, no, Swingers is Doug Lyman. He did Maid. Maid was... Oh, Maid, that's Maid right. Maid was, was the... Vince Vaughn. Vince Vaughn again, right, right. But, um... 
Yeah, I really like the fact that Taiki Waititi got to make a Taiki Waititi movie within yeah. the MCU. But even and James that, Gunn got to make a James Gunn movie in the MCU. And now sure. Sam Raimi gets to make a Sam Raimi movie. I would say even Ragnarok still felt like MCU-ish. It still had the Marvel. Uh, like, I don't know. No, no, like... Uh, they, they, they still had the big CGI as far as, army fight that's what I'm saying. and stuff. That, right? That's what I'm that's saying. Right. It's like, as far as like the, the visuals, it felt more MCU-ish. But he threw colors and weird right. weird shit in and it. And a comedy. I mean, he, the he comedy, obviously the redid... Comedy, the writing yeah. specifically is Taika's film as well. Yeah. And, and one of the critiques of Marvel movies, and I love Marvel movies, but I think this is a fair critique, is you get to Act 3, and we're going to have the same big fights with the heroes against the CGI army of robots or aliens or yeah. animals or something you can kill without <laughs> feeling like you're murdering a bunch of people yeah. and not feel okay about it for 45 minutes. And, and even, you know, Guardians couldn't get away from, from that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, it's, yeah, really it's, cool. And to be fair, what else do you do at the end of Super? We would have a big fight. <laughs> You know? It's it's cool when you see it at first, right? You know, and it's like like we were saying, you gotta you, you gotta think outside the box sometimes. But I mean, at the same time, it, this one did it did, mm-hmm. and it's like it, it's not necessarily to to do something like that. You have to like prep it, and like I'm, I'm not saying these movies are not prepped because I know that like oh right Kevin now, Feige has, says this is what has to happen in yeah, this movie to make the story. They are prepping right. like ten decade years a decade out. out, yeah. But it's like some movies I feel like suffer because of that then because they don't have. They can't put the same amount of love and time as they can into all the films. Yeah, because you get to the end, it's like, this is where you have to end the movie. Yeah. Right? Ragnarok, as great as it was, has to end with Thor in space so that sure. Thanos can grab him. Yeah, and it's like, you for know? every Ragnarok, for every Doctor Strange, you have a Captain Marvel, a Thor 2, and it's just like... Right. Okay, and Eternals, just, something just, kind of yeah, falls for me. just filler. A bit. Well, I think Eternals try to, like, think outside the box. Yeah, like, at least the big battle at the end was among themselves. Yeah, and it's like, speaking of uh, directors that kind of brought their own vision, I felt like Chloe Zhao, she brought her sure, vision to that. absolutely. Uh, whether it worked or not, I'm not sure. I, I wonder if the critical reception to that film was because it was so different. I think there's... Oddly, with that movie, it's a... It's over long for a movie. Yeah, it's way too long. That movie could have had 20 or 30 minutes cut out of it easily. Yes. Um, but at the same time, you had all these characters to go through it, but we didn't get much gro- introduction or growth to any of them. It ends weird. It would have been a great six-episode Disney Plus show. You think? Okay, I, think they, yeah. I think they could have done it better to where the characters mattered more. It would have felt... It would have made the shows feel more prestigious if it was definitely the same budget. You right. Know? Absolutely. One of my main critiques, which I think we're going to talk about Moon Knight here shortly... About the shows is the shows, their budget you can feel the sure. you can feel the budget. Um, WandaVision was really good. I, I enjoyed it. Yeah, I did too. But you know what though, we still ended up in Act Three in WandaVision. Yeah, with flying around with flying and people vision. throwing yeah. yeah and and laser beams in the sky and yeah and, and and buildings getting destroyed. It's like we just went back to every <laughs> other Marvel property with how it ends. Sure, sure. I think that show was paced very slow in the beginning for. For a good reason, and they were right. building up to the, to the big climax at the end. But you're right; it was still just a big battle. Um, whereas a show like Moon Knight, that okay, well, we, I think we're skipping over Loki. We need to talk about Loki because Loki was the most. Rick I loved Loki. Was the most Rick and Morty of. Uh, I, I, of the it MCU was, and I loved the crap out of it. I, the, my only critique with that is how they ended it, because uh, it's like they didn't really give us a real resolution. It's just set up for season two, which you know, hopefully, it's good. Um, I felt like it set up the fact that it, they, they brought in the new villain at yeah. the end. That that was like the, the big. That that show had to do the heavy current, the heavy lifting of, of introducing characters. the multiverse. Yeah, exactly, right? that's what yeah. the show was there for was to get us to the multiverse. And the variants and all that. Which right. yeah, this this movie does not work without without Loki and Wandavision. I don't think any of them do. I don't think Spider Man worked without Loki and Wandavision. Yeah, you're you know right. What I mean, I think I, I didn't even think about that. You're right. I think this phase of the MCU kicked off with Loki. Yeah. and Wandavision. I think they were it there. Did. It did. I mean, I, cause I I still have not seen Black Widow. I know people give me shit for that. I know. I feel like you're missing a whole lot. I there. know, but I'm a completist. I need to finish it. I just right. need to put set aside the time yeah, to and watch I, and it. I watched it, but yeah, I need to watch put aside the time to put watch a subpar Marvel film. And I just, yeah, it's I just hard. Don't, it, I don't want to do it. You know, it's hard to watch a movie, guys, when you are told like watch it because it's part of the canon. Yeah, but it you aren't going to enjoy it as much as you enjoy the other things. So and then it feels like homework. And that's not the character. I, I love Scarlett Johansson. I do too. Black I Widow. still feel like they did a great thing with that movie. Yeah, it's weird they gave her a prequel film in between Civil War. Right, they and, killed her. Yeah, and it's like yeah. and she was one of my favorites. Like I, I love her. I'm kind of bummed that she's not going to be Black Widow anymore because she was like a mainstay Avenger. I think there are rumors Since that I, she's going to be back in the MCU in some other capacity. Uh, I guess honestly, they can do anything at this point in time. They have a multiverse. You yeah, can exactly. literally have anybody show up, which is kind of a segue into the Illuminati. Right. How did you feel about that? Uh, honestly, I 
you know, I was very excited from the trailers to see the Illuminati. That's what everybody went for. Was I the trailer, yeah. was much less excited about the results. Yeah. I felt like well, it was kind of wedged in. Sure. A little bit unnecessarily. Uh-huh. Um, if it's just a cheap way to get us to know that we're going to have more multiverse stuff and we're going to have the Fantastic Four, okay. Yeah. We're bringing the X-Men in. Okay. That's all fine and good. But I feel like the actors themselves in those scenes yeah. had no idea what the hell they were doing there. Nope. If you look at, somebody pointed out, I was listening to a, a podcast or a video on YouTube about how, uh, if you look at Krasinski's eye line, it's, the, it's not matching. It's not the same. Because he has no idea what he's looking at. I think he was very wooden. Right. But I think it's because of that. So one, this movie underwent like significant reshoots. Whether that was a different Illuminati scene or if they just included it on the fly, I, I don't know. I wouldn't be surprised if they cast Krasinski in that role after shooting all those scenes. And you then think, went yeah. back and wedged him in like, hey, we're get- Krasinski's agreed to be in our Fantastic Four franchise. Yeah. Let's wedge his ass into Which I think Doctor was, Strange. I think it's been negotiated for a while because the internet has wanted Krasinski as Mr. Fantastic they have, for absolutely. years. Yeah. And even during COVID, he had that show... Uh, that he was doing for right the free thing show yeah the thing yeah. to be happy about show yeah, yeah, yeah. and he he hinted that he was going to be in some property than that mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. he was like it's the closest I'll get to be a superhero and he like looks at the camera like Jim from the office right, you know? right. but yeah even still having him there it looked like it was very very recent he was not wearing you know an actual suit he was like obviously in a, in a body it was all so suit. CGI'd everything yes. about it was so CGI'd and yeah it's it was it was good to see these characters like Captain uh, Captain Carter was cool right so I, that, I, that's, that's the character. one thing we've really got from. What, what if, if the yeah. what if show was seeing Captain Carter? Yeah, I'm, in a yeah, hilarious yeah. scene. Did anyone else not laugh in the theater when she said, "I can do this all day," and then immediately died? <laughs> yeah, okay, I that was hilarious. So that payoff for me <laughs> made the Illuminati scene. It was pretty funny when because she, when yeah. they all got murdered horribly right. and was, quickly, quickly, oh yeah. my, and, and very violently. Oh my god! Like mm-hmm. when Black Bolt literally like split his head implodes. I was like. What? That's some Sam Raimi horror movie stuff. Oh my god! Right that there. was okay. So I saw this in a theater, like a packed theater, with people reacting to the film, and literally somebody audibly went, "No!" <laughs> literally, the one Black Bolt fan was there, and he went crazy when he showed up, and then when his head exploded, he was just so upset. <laughs> so someone was a fan of a uh, Black Bolt. Uh, yeah. Black Bolt. Oh my god! It was amazing. It was so funny, and I think that really made it because it's also like, what if like Kevin Feige's trolling us a little bit? Because obviously, uh, us is. as fans, we have like, expectations for these movies, and we also, like, by fan casting John Krasinski, we're demanding that they're in these films. And this is Feige being like, I cast the movies. Dude, you know? remember in WandaVision when he fucked with everybody by bringing in uh, Evan Peters? Yeah, like, oh my silver? god, yeah. So yeah. we all thought, oh my god, this is it. This is the bridge between I, I the lost X-Men my mind. universe and the Marvel universe. And his name was, like, Richard Boner or and something? Yeah, it was a guy yeah. named Boner, then it wasn't even him. At yeah, the end, yeah, at the end, yeah, It yeah. wasn't even him. Like, what a, what a giant that, fuck that you, was, yeah. That was Feige... Flipping all of us off. He killed Patrick Stewart again. He brought back Patrick Stewart out of retirement. From like and a, ripped his head off. Yeah, yeah literally, like, he had a horrible death in Logan just to have an even more horrible death in this film. It was badass. So, you know, it'd be really funny if Krasinski's not the Fantastic Four. This, and he doesn't have to be. And that's the thing is, that, you know, people were upset, like, oh, you finally get Krasinski in the, you know, is in, in the Fantastic Four is Reed Richards, and yeah. you just kill him. Maybe... Or maybe he's going to be I, in the I, movies. I, I think he will be, because obviously it's a variant, Reed Richards, you know what I mean? Uh, but but you could have anybody with the rules that they've established yeah, for the world. That would be so fucking funny, though, if literally like they didn't have him as, as Mr. Fantastic. Did they cast somebody else? I would if love that. anybody else was doing I that. almost want that to be the case. <laughs> Harry Cable shows up as, oh my God, as yeah. uh, Reed Richards. It's like the lamest guy ever. Oh, man. who You know, I... A lot of people of mine were saying that was not Reed Richards because Reed Richards is kind of like the smartest man in right, the right. MCU, and he was like, "Wanda, this guy can blow you away with one with one right, scream right. or whatever," and all of a sudden, like he's got no mouth. And I, it's like, I feel like even I feel like Krasinski can pull off. He's a good actor. Yeah, he he's can, played smart characters before with more time and a better script and right more focus. Because I think if he's going to do Fantastic Four, he's probably going to end up directing it. I would love that because um, what's his name? John Watts mm-hmm. was pulled off the Fantastic Four movie, or he. Like, they, they parted ways, is what the story was. So, who, there's a gig open, maybe he wants it, right, you know? Right, right. But and it's... I, go ahead, sorry. No, sorry. Uh, but I was just going to say, yeah, the, the, the you know, kind of get back to the idea of letting Raimi do his own thing and branching off of the formula. Yeah. If you notice that the, the movies that go off the formula, though, kind of get the worst reactions, including from critics... It's like, yeah, it's this like is mixed. I'm not mixed, but it's 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 a, not a as little fresh. bit. It's not as high. It's, it's like not a 95. Yeah, it's, it's not, not tomatoes and not the end all be all. But of course it's still, not. But that's just a 
you know, just the, here's the, where the critics overall are yeah. on the movie, and it's a little more lukewarm than some of the properties that I think just formula, formula, formula. I mean, we mentioned the, the Act 3 big CGI battle at the end, right, yeah. in every movie. Is there any more eye-rolling moment, and I love these two movies, but you had back-to-back ones in Infinity War and Endgame, where not <laughs> only do they have the Act 3 yeah. CGI battle army, it's the same army in both movies. <laughs> it is the same army, They yeah. literally have the same CGI army to fight at the end of both of those movies in a row. It's, like, it's just different we're locations. watching yeah. this again? Yeah. Whereas Endgame, yeah, it just puts them all together. Yeah, together. that's it. Yeah, yeah. Well, now we're putting the flying slugs from 2012 in along with it, and it's yeah. all the same thing. It's like everything we ever did, here you <laughs> yeah, go. Yeah, here you it's go. Like, it's like, yeah. Right, yeah. What a we're, curtain call for even the CGI armies. Whereas this movie, like, the, the CGI battle at the end was very unique. Like, Zombie Strange was fucking awesome. And like, gross. His, yeah. His, yeah, very gross. Yeah, his cloak of souls, you know what I mean? Yeah. That was so awesome. I love right, that. Right, right. You know what I mean? So that was outside the box, and, like, honestly, pretty gothic, pretty metal. I was right. into it, man. I was I, into it. I would really like, though, while you mention that, to please have one villain at some point in the MCU, just one, that doesn't have something flying out of their hands when they do this. Yeah. Something. I can't think yeah. of any of them that don't go, ah. Well, they <laughs> make their constipated of, face. Yeah, just, it, uh, exactly. Yeah. Well, I mean, Wanda could, she can do anything. She can change reality. But yeah. she still has to go, uh, with red fireballs. Yeah, because we have to have some physical representation. Yeah, we have yeah, to, yeah, right. Yeah. And I would like that to be different. Sure. Um, Which, I may hint at it a little bit with the, um, I thought it was really cool, actually, speaking of the Illuminati, the Xavier scene. Right. Where he goes into her mind, and they don't have a battle, per se, but it's like, you know, it is kind of like a, like a metaphysical uh, battle of wits, almost. Like, sure. she obviously gets the upper hand on him. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Pretty she quickly too. Tears his freaking head off. Oh my god! Right. You know what I mean? I think the only one in that, the only death in that movie that didn't involve ah, was yeah. uh, Reed Richards dying. Oh you know, my god! He stretches true. out at her stupidly, and all of a sudden he just turns into spaghetti, and his I head know. explodes. But one of my favorite lines in the movie actually is when she looks at him and she's like, uh, "Is your children have a mother?" And he's like, "Yes." And she goes, "Well, she can raise them." And and I was right. like, "Oh shit!" Right. I was yeah. like, "Oh my god, Reed, run!" Yeah, Jim, and thought, no. And that's how you know that he was put in last minute. Yeah. Because his death was kind of stupid in that she just oh. she just made their most powerful yeah. guy's head explode. And so yeah. and so Reed Richards does this at her. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And and then yeah. of course immediately yeah. dies. He tries like, to that her was his strategy, the smartest guy. Give her a hug. Strategy yeah. is ah yeah. 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 Take it's all he's it's all he's really got, actually. Right, yeah. 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 But still, I mean like yeah, the Captain Carter getting cut in half was amazing. I love that. Uh I'm surprised they didn't show it. They kind of, well, like they, they they hinted quite a bit, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah you still, know what happened. The blood on the shield. I think that's yeah. This is the most blood we've seen in an MCU film. Even when he kills the the giant squid with the eye thing right, coming right, out. Right, right, yeah. I was so into it. I was like, guys, this is this is the most gnarly MCU movie. And I know it's not. It's, people are saying it should be rated R. I don't think it should be rated R. No, it's PG, PG thirteen. But this yeah. is what PG thirteen was like. Was like invented for. It's stuff that you can't put in a PG film. Right. But it's not quite R. Right. This it's, is perfect. It, it's, it's to let you know your little kid shouldn't go watch it, which is exactly how I feel about the movie. Don't yeah. take your little don't take your eight year olds to watch Doctor Strange. There, there's jump scares. Like there's straight up jump yeah, scares. There's in some this creepy film. stuff in it. Yeah, her, absolutely. The, the puddle scene with her coming out of the puddles. His but, eyeball popping up yeah. out of his head. Oh yeah. my god. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh <laughs> man. And it's like it did feel very old school in that way because it reminded me of the Indiana Jones films. Not sure. not because it's the same story, but like just tone. The tone right. was mm-hmm. dark. But adventurous, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? I love that. It, from the beginning, it starts off with a chase. Right. Love that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. I love it when a movie starts off and they're like in the middle of doing something. Sure. You know. And so we have we haven't mentioned America Chavez at all. What, what do you think, think of? As I'd say, what do you think of her as a character? So I was not familiar with her from the comics. I'm pretty sure she's like a, a, a newer character. Like I think she's been around mm-hmm. for a while, but I, I've not read any of her comics. And apparently, she's done very well. The star, the star portal portals is definitely a thing in the comics. Um, I liked it. I thought she was one of the least annoying characters sure. that MCU has introduced. I know they're building towards like a Young Avengers. I'd be happy to watch her in a film. Yeah, I agree. Um, I'm not going to lie. You know, it's a good to talk about the, where we think the future of the MCU is going. Mm-hmm. I am not as excited as many people are about the Young Avengers. I want to watch it. And, and, and it, it simply comes down to this. We've got the 20-something movies with all these heroes we like. We understand some of them are dead and not coming back. Sure. But at the same time, you can't replace... Robert Downey Jr. and Chris know. Evans, you it's know, and Scarlett the... Johansson, with these, you know, with these, you know, tw- young twenty-something actors, yeah. and expect us to have the same level of buy-in with them. That's kind of funny because I guess in a way it's not for us, 
You know what I mean? Like we're the next veterans. generation. Yeah, yeah right. we're we're the veterans of this franchise, man. We've been there since day one, but now the kids that are growing up with it, that's theirs. They get fair. They get to be like, oh yeah, it's that side character in this movie that I saw when I was five. You oh, know right, what I mean? Yeah, and now exactly. they're yeah, and so it's it's cool in that way, I guess, and I can appreciate it. But at the same time, it's like as a person that's been watching these movies forever, give me something else. I, what I don't want them to do though is make every movie to where you have to watch every single movie. Right now they've got thirty films. Obviously, we can start diverting. If you don't want to watch a movie. Don't watch the movie. Well, and I feel like we're getting screwed on that a little bit. I think you're right. But like like you said, if you haven't been watching Disney Plus shows, you're going to be lost in some of their movies now. Yeah. The only so one it's like, is Disney using their movies to sell their TV platform? Are they using their TV platform to sell their movies or both? But it feels like in order to really stay up with the MCU now, you've got to be spending money on both. Well, I think the shows are even out of Feige's, Feige's hands. He's, he, he's a businessman, and obviously mm-hmm. Disney's a corporation. And right. that's mandated. Corp- like they want shows. They want shows. Right. They want shows. That's why we get so many Star Wars shows. That's why we're getting right. a million Disney shows. And so Feige's he's doing his best. I'll give him that. Mm-hmm. You know, the thing that does suck though is I almost said you don't have to watch Falcon and Winter Soldier, but I'm sure you will have to watch that for the fourth Captain America that's coming out. When 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 Sam is Captain America, right? Well, that, that's confirmed, and the showrunner of, of Falcon and Winter Soldier is making the fourth Captain America film. So, I was not a huge fan of Falcon like and Winter Soldier. I, I liked the last episode when he's all decked out in his uniform, but even still, I just wasn't for me. And hundred percent, once again, completely forgettable villains. It just felt slow. It just felt really it was slow, slow, and it looked really bad. All, all it was was a six hours of getting Sam okay with being Captain America. Yeah, and, and I'm like, like, I don't need six hours of like, Sam getting okay. With it, being it, yeah, Captain it's America. six hours of him being Captain America. And it's like, well, we just we went over this at the end game. You're Captain America, man. Just, be, it, ca- just be Captain America. And, and yeah. as soon as he gave the shield up in episode one, it's like by the end of the show, he's going to be getting the shield back and accepting. The yeah, fact that he's going to be Captain America. I wish we all the whole knew show. What, we all knew what the show was. I wish the whole show would have been like that. Like, right. like you can. I wish the show would have started with him as Captain America, which it kind of. I guess it does. He's fighting the guy from from Winter Soldier. I think he's. I don't think he has the shield though. I think. He, oh, he doesn't. You're he's, right. He's, you're he's right, giving right. it to the museum. He's just. He's yeah. just still being the Falcon. Well, he should have had his. If they would have started off with his uniform at the end of that last episode, and it was like he goes to like a Spider Man two arc where he's like, maybe I can't be a superhero. Maybe right, I'm not right. made for this. Which he has that arc in the show, but like, have him be Captain America. That's who he is. You know, what he's I mean? not Captain America until the very end of the show, and it's like it just makes you like, what's the point? You know right. what I mean? Like, and they gave the him a really terrible costume too. I know that half mask helmet. Thing to expose his it's, head. it's pretty comic accurate. I will say this about this phase of Marvel: uh, all the costumes have been very accurate. Have they? Very much so. Uh, Scarlet Witch. Um, even if you look at like uh, WandaVision, they have like that the right. Halloween episode. Right, yeah. uh, Spider Man at the end of the No Way Home has got like a pretty faithful outfit. I, I'm not doing them all justice, but there's a few more in the, in this, in the series. That Do you like think Wanda's good. done? No. They they made it. The way they ended the movie was she buries herself under the building. I don't think but she I did. agree with you. Now, do you think that she's coming back as a villain, or has she learned to air of her ways and coming back as a I think it'll be hero. A, like an antihero. So I think they're going to have her like in a uh, like in an antihero type way. So like I can see her being an antagonist in, in future films, but I also think that like they maxed her out with her evil abilities in this movie. Yeah, she was like, pretty evil for this movie, and she destroys and, the dark hold. So I mean, like that that temptation is gone. The only thing with bringing her back as a hero is is that she's so goddamn powerful now. Yeah, she's, that OP. It's, that it's she's hard, very OP. It's hard to put her into an Avengers situation where she and Captain Marvel are fighting alongside each other, and they don't just immediately obliterate whatever it is they're yeah. fighting without blinking. Well. So they're building up to this big multiverse war, which I'm assuming is going to be Secret Wars. Secret Wars is, 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 the, is the rumor I'm hearing, yeah. And so that's just every multiverse, every reality versus one another on you, a place called Battle World. You think we're doing like the 20 movie build up to it, kind of like we did with the Avengers? The, the, with the first four phases? I would assume so. Right. I really hope we get some X-Men in there, but it doesn't sound like it. We might. I, I could be wrong. You know what I mean? Like obviously we got Xavier in this film and Wanda, right. even Wanda was an X-Men character to right. begin with. It's hard. It's hard to say. Um, I just I mean, hope we don't have to wait ten years to see X Men. I, I I get it. Like you know, they right. want to build it up, but it's like I just want to see them new stuff. It's just know? it's just hard for me to see Wanda in too much of a collaborative role because of how powerful she is. You know. Well, you got to think Vision's still out there. Right. Yeah, Vision's gonna come back. And his decked out new look. He's all. He's, he's all. Like, he's white and he flies away. I, I heard somebody make the joke. When is he coming back? Whenever Marvel needs him again. Yeah. No <laughs> whenever, shit. No shit. Whenever, whenever, whenever next movie that he needs to. Be I wonder in if is. they're gonna have him like do cosmic stuff now because like obviously like they they touch upon the cosmic stuff with Eternals. Right. Doctor Strange is like fantasy and magic. 
Thor is kind of both, but it's more cosmic. Thor is more cosmic now. It looks. It certainly looks like Love and Thunder is going to be. Yeah. Well, even after like Ragnarok, that was right. like all space. Right. Uh, whereas like the first two Thor movies, like oh, magic and science, and, and they didn't work. work. No, I did not like them. The first two Thor movies. I'm sorry, even Thor one did not really work. I, I really did not like Thor one. Too many Dutch angles. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it was all just like you know. Okay, that, yeah. It was. It was filmed. Weird, you know, I just okay. didn't think the story was that. Compelling. You know, it's weird. We we're talking earlier about like directors that like had visions and stuff. Kenneth Branagh made that fucking movie. Yeah. And, and even like Captain America one with Joe Johnson and that kind of felt like its own thing but let, still let me ask you this because uh, I've pondered this before I mentioned to you we didn't really talk about it though since since Marvel has seemingly let some pretty talented directors kind of do their own thing with their movies is there somebody out there you would like to see do a Marvel property some director that, that, that hasn't maybe has doesn't even have a, co- <laughs> a, a, a big budget background at all but you'd like to see what they would do with a Marvel movie if they could Taiki Waititi it and kind of run, you know what I mean? Run run, run their own thing with okay, it. So someone lose, out there. I'm going to lose all, all credibility as a Marvel fan for saying this, but I just thought it'd be interesting because of how he literally adapts the source material. Guys, I'm sorry. It's Zack Snyder. Oh, I did not see that coming. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm, I'm very sorry, but think about it this way. He is a great visual director. He's he an has amazing a, visual director. He's done. He has a big history with big, with big budget. Give big budget him a writer. Bigger. Give him a good fucking writer. And an editor. And an editor. <laughs> yeah. Well, gets Kevin, yeah, that's covered. I think, I think right. Kevin's got that covered. Right. So, yeah, I, I don't know. I think it, uh, he makes very muscular, masculine, like, portrayals of superheroes in films, and I'm a big 90s comics guy. Sure, sure. I think that would be cool. Would it be great? I don't know. I know his movies are not perfect, guys. I know. Is there a know. is there a movie you'd like to see him do in particular? A, a character or <laughs> oh, even, even a sequel? Oh man, I'm gonna get so much hate for saying this. X Men. <laughs> <You know, laughs> I want to see Zack Snyder's X Men so bad. It's so bad, man. At least the Snyder cut of X Men. Let's give you a '90s <laughs> Zack Snyder's uh, '90s Zack Snyder X Men movie, and then I'll go away forever. You'll never hear from me again. <laughs> But it's interesting. It would be funny if, uh, like, Scorsese got a Marvel film. Could sure. you imagine? Oh, my God. Roland Emmerich. <laughs> oh, the, wor- the world ends. <laughs> Give Roland Emmerich a movie, please. Roland Emmerich, Silver Surfer. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be great. It would be. Uh, okay, so realistic. You know, here's a good one. Adam McKay. I think Adam McKay would, be- would make a great Adam McKay movie. has gotten, is an underappreciated filmmaker. He can do any style. He, he wrote. So Edgar Wright was doing Ant Man forever, mm-hmm. uh, and then Adam McKay came on to to rewrite part of the script for Paul Rudd whenever uh, Edgar Wright left. Right. So he's partially. I know, think he would do. I think I like that answer better than Zack Snyder, but that's just me personally. Yeah, I know. I know. I, I people online are gonna hate that. Sure, but that's my opinion. <laughs> I would like to see Vince Gilligan tackle. A Marvel property. That's the elegant even answer. even one of the shows. The elegant answer. Vince Gilligan on a Marvel show would be awesome. What he's, character? He, here's the thing. He plots incredibly well, right? There aren't. He doesn't have big plot holes yeah. in any of his in any of his shows. Any the most shows that I've really the two know, shows. The, the, <laughs> the, the, yeah, the uh, Breaking Bad universe. Sure. Um, he uh, he doesn't have huge plot holes. He introduces characters incredibly well. Yeah. He does violence really well. He knows how to pace a show. Um, and so he does really well with ensembles. I wouldn't mind seeing him do a Fantastic Four or an X Men because Ooh. you have so many characters interwoven, and he crushes that. I think that would be very visual effects heavy. It'd be interesting to see how he handles that. Absolutely. What about Vince Gilligan's Daredevil? That'd be cool. That would be cool. It'd be really cool because I don't because I know like uh, the Netflix series obviously is over. It's on Disney Plus now. They're going to be doing stuff with the character. Pretty grounded character. It is a very grounded character. You've got realistic settings. It's mostly martial there. arts. Yeah, right. There's not a lot of magic. Right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, there's magic with like the hand. That's about it. Not yeah, yeah but yeah. not a whole lot. I would sure. read that. That would be cool. I think Vince Gilligan doing uh, either a film or a six episode arc on Disney Plus of Daredevil would be really it. awesome. I would too, absolutely. Because and the, I think it would be really tense. And it's <laughs> like the people that Disney are getting for the Disney shows have been like pretty solid showrunners. Like the guy who did Moon Knight also made was it Umbrella Academy? Yeah. So that was, I mean, that was, I would like to see that. Yeah, Vince Gilligan, get a paycheck, bro. Yeah. Go get a paycheck. That's the other thing. Go get a paycheck, man. You've made 10 years of high art shows that everybody adores. Which I'm sure AMC. AMC's paying the bills. <laughs> There's no doubt about that. Vince yeah. Gilligan is homeless, right? <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> he's, he's writing Better Call Saul under a bridge. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> sitting, sitting in a public library. Yeah. <laughs> drinking, drinking, <laughs> drinking a cup of coffee that someone gave him outside. Oh, my um, God. But yeah, no, I, I would like to see him go, go grab that Marvel money, baby. Vince Gilligan should go make a Marvel property. 
um, with, with his other partners that worked on those shows with him, yeah. and I bet he would kill it. Because he absolutely kills what the, all the other stuff that he does. I think it's hard to, to think of a director that actually has, like, a vision. Because it's like, I don't know. Because once they go to the MCU, it's like, it's a 50-50 shot. They're, you're either going to get Captain Marvel. Like, Aaron, uh, Anna Fleck and Ryan Bowden made Captain Marvel. Yeah, like, they're but, very great indie directors. Yeah. But you can't tell any of their sensibilities in Captain Marvel. Whereas in Doctor Strange, it feels like Sam Raimi. Right. I guess it just kind of depends on, you know... What you agree to before you walk in. Am I making my movie or am I making your movie? Yeah. And it's, okay, so I think, okay, here's the ultimate answer. If, if they let Spielberg do something. Oh, Spielberg would kill it in the Yeah, because who's got more juice than Steven Spielberg? <laughs> no. Nobody. No, there's, not a, there's not a producer <laughs> there's not a soul, yeah. that's going to tell Spielberg how his movie He's going to look at Kevin Feige and be like, I don't take fucking notes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. And then, he'd probably say it in a polite way. But, I mean, like, think about that movie. I mean, like, I'm sure that would be, like, one hell of a collaboration. So I'm, yeah. I'm retracting my Zack Snyder statement, even though I really want to see that. Uh, give Spielberg, what would be the most adventurous MCU film, do you think? Here's one that I think would be hard to pull off. I think it would be hard to pull off an Incredible Hulk movie, because so far, oh, we've, so yeah. far, so far we've had two shitty ones, give Spielberg and I think the Hulk. Spielberg could kill the Hulk. Fuck yeah, he could. Dude. You could have like a Hulk on the run. Fuck yeah. You, I would love to see that. That'd be awesome, yeah. Spielberg doing an Incredible Hulk movie with a good script that has not existed yet. Not a, not as a solo the, project. The Ed Norton got close, but it wasn't that great. It was a lot better than the Eric Bonner one for sure. Which that's a trip. Oh my god, the Eric Bonner movie is like an existential superhero film. That <laughs> it's I saw. Weird. Yeah. I saw that when I was like really young. It came out like 2003. Yeah. I saw it in the theaters, and I was just like, my mind. It, yeah. Like, what am I watching? Opened up. Literally, I was like, angly. <laughs> fuck with me so hard. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. No, I, yeah, Spielberg doing the Hulk would be really cool. I'd be there for that. Yeah, and Spielberg doing anything. You could give Spielberg like. The Spielberg could have done Ant Man really well. It doesn't really matter. Spiel- <laughs> yeah, yeah. As, as we learned from uh, West Side Story, there isn't a genre that Spielberg can't pull off. It's just I want to see more personality with a camera on these films, which sure, which we got. So right. you know, Moon Knight is interesting though because obviously the show just ended. Mm-hmm. It what it started off as super original, and I th- I still think it is a very original show. Looking back on it, is it as good? As we think it is. Because if you look at it as one whole story and not the mystery box from week to week, right? it just kind of, in, in my personal opinion, it just kind of feels like it would be like a like a superhero film from 2003. So, so you don't think there's a rewatchability factor? With no, I'm not saying that. I think, I, think, I think there definitely is, but I think that like it's, it's, it's a pretty basic story. Like obviously it's about a man dealing with mental health, right? Um, which is a big deal and it's a good thing. But at the same time, it's like it's a pretty like low. The stakes are low. Like it feels like a like a Raiders like adventure. Sure. But at the same time, it's like what happens in the show? He he wakes up. He goes to work. He's like fire people acting like treat me weirdly. Passes out. Wakes up again. He's outside of a castle right, somewhere. Right. Mm-hmm. Goes to sleep. Wakes up again. And it's like okay, cool. Like it's a mystery box thing. Right. And then, but like but like the the whole story of the show is him. It, it takes place maybe what like three four days. I'm not sure what the timeline is. He kind of travels a lot. That's what I'm saying. And, it's, and you don't maybe, know. You can't, it's maybe a week. You can't. Uh, it might be a lot longer than that. You don't really sure. know when he when he's waking up and blacking out and being Mark and being you know. I guess it just doesn't feel like a long time. It doesn't feel very epic. It just feels very contained. And I feel like you could have like an hour forty five superhero film out of it. Well, I mean, I feel like a lot of. I mean, Falcon and the Shoulder Soldier was the same thing. Exactly. exactly. That was a two hour movie stretched into. A and six I, I definitely hour. think that Moon Knight is better than the Falcon. And I, I do too, for sure. Uh, for me personally, I really like Moon Knight for a number of reasons. And why it worked for me. You may be right. As, I like far, as, as far as if you take it all, if, like if I were to binge watch it, maybe I would have felt yeah. differently than watching it week to week to week, which I really enjoyed doing. Sure. I did too. Um, but for a couple things. One, Oscar Isaac fucking destroyed Incredible that role. Incredible actor. Incredible actor. Um, I hope we get to see him again in the role because also, he destroyed it. Shout out to Ethan Hawke. I think yeah, Ethan and Ethan Hawke was great, great too. Yeah, yeah. He's um, a very good villain. Plus, it was the as far as the shows go, it was the least MCU show of the MCU shows, which again, that was nice. if you're getting superhero fatigue, which I think America kind of is at this point, has to be, that um, weird, yeah. you know, we've all gone through it, especially when the movies aren't great. Yeah. You know, by the time I saw Thor 2 in the theater, I was like, okay, maybe, you maybe, know, and that was Let's eight pump years ago, yeah. <laughs> and I was like, okay, maybe we're overdoing this a little bit. Yeah. Um, but Moon Knight was the least MCU of all the MCU shows. Which was refreshing. I kind of wish they would have right. ended it, um... Okay, so you know, like when he wakes up and he's in the hospital, right. and, like you think he's crazy for a second. 
I thought it would bold as shit if that's how the show ends. Right. It's, he's just, it's all in his head. It's all in his head. And he's got, he has the Moon Knight action figure and he's just a psycho. Because you see his wife there for some reason. The only, the, the only way that wouldn't work, which I'm kind of excited about, is if you plan on using him in the future. Right? Yeah. If it was all in his head, there is no future of Moon Knight. Which I think they're saving him. Uh, oh, man. There's a character, not a character arc. Uh, there's a comic run with Blade, Moon Knight. Uh, Ghost Rider, I think. It's like all their dark characters. Black Knight, Punisher, that kind of yeah, stuff. Yeah, Black Knight. Okay, Black Knight's coming too. So like, yeah, I, I can't remember what, what they're called, but like those characters specifically have like a little team. Sure. So if if Marvel's building up to like these big, like several different team events, that's interesting. I'd love to see Moon Knight and Punisher and Blade in a in a, in a it's kind of show over, movie together. It's, it's very overwhelming to think about all the possible team ups and movies that we have to have. It's like, are we going to have like ten fucking movies a year at this well, point? Well, here's the thing: you get to by the time you get to Secret War. Everybody's going to be there. Everybody. 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 I think that the cameos that we were expecting in this film, and Doctor Strange, would be in the Secret War movie. They will. Um, but I think, I think you've got to introduce most of it up until then. I feel like this was, and I'm really, like I said, I'm really glad after Spider-Man, which I loved, taking a break from just like bringing, yeah. from the cameo movie. Um, I'll also, I, I, I just, I look forward to, uh, Getting back to that a little bit, possibly with Ant Man. Sure, you know what I mean. Oh, Quantum Mania. Quantum Mania might curious to see how that might, happens. Yeah. Might bridge in some more of this. So this is a hot take I have. I recently rewatched No Way Home. Mm-hmm. I still enjoy it, but I don't think it works as well as it did the first time I saw it. I rewatched it also, and again, the first time I saw it was obviously on the big screen. Second time with on, an audience, right on a TV without the audience. And I agree. I don't think it's quite as good as when I saw it in the theater. Mm-hmm. When you just look at it independently as a film by itself, and it's it, it's it's all fan service. It doesn't look very good, even like the no. Uh, there's some CGI that doesn't work in, especially like towards the, the end. The depth of field is off. It's right. just it doesn't look good. Um, I'm not a big fan of how they portray a lot of the characters. Willem Dafoe's good. He's a great Green Goblin. I'm so happy to see him. And, it, and there is an enjoyment factor to this film. You're right. But I think people being like, it's the best Spider-Man movie. No, it's that is not. still into the Spider-Verse. Yeah, or even Spider-Man 2. Right. Because what this movie does is it plays with your memories of those films. Yeah, I it, agree. It, it, it kind of capitalizes on it. It feels kind of gross in a way. No, it is. It's totally a... It, it, it's fans... Endgame was fan service in the best way. Yeah. We're ending the saga that we've been doing for 12 years or so. Yeah. And we're going to bring everything kind of together. And I felt like that in Endgame, that super worked. Yeah. I feel like less so in Spider-Man, No Way Home, and more, it was more of, all right, let's, uh, let's pump some money out of these properties that we've had. And it's, it, that's probably mostly Sony to blame. It is, it is I primarily agree. a Sony production. And um, I, I wouldn't be surprised if Sony said, you can make this movie if we do this a little bit. Yeah. It might have been Sony's idea to have do you know what's interesting? all their stuff in it. So originally, I don't know if you remember this, before COVID, uh, Doctor Strange 2 was slated to come out before uh, Into the Spider. Not, I'm sorry. It was slated to come out before No Way Home. Really? So they, they did a little shuffling there, and Sony's like, we're not missing this fucking release date. That might be why the CGI doesn't look as good. Probably. They were like, you will hit this release Probably. date. But even in that film, you can tell all the actors are not in the same room together. Right. Alfred right. Molina is not in the same room. No, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Is, is it might have been a little more rushed as far as... Sure. As far as... Because, I mean... Sure. The CGI work that's done on these movies... Yeah. I mean, uh, a little bit Olsen even pointed this out for everyone trashing yeah. the MCU. The amount... No one understands the amount of goddamn work that goes into making the, putting these movies together... After the actors are done. It's Kevin Feige holding these people in a room. Yeah. yeah. I mean, really, it's, you've got a billion uh, special effects people and editors Which, working their asses off. And kudos to them. Like, it's not their fault. No, it's, it's not. With, with more time, you can accomplish anything. Deadlines are everything. Dead, it, it's always deadlines. It is. And I don't know. I, I, I guess when you have that many A-list stars as well, they're all off filming other other, other movies. Yeah, absolutely. Like their, their time is, quite frankly, money. So, like, to, not, to be able to make a movie and not have to have everybody there, I get it. It's it's very, very, very um, oh, uh, pr- productive, and it's it, it's probably a good way to save some money, too. But yeah, I wouldn't be surprised, you know, bringing that up, like the Illuminati, I don't know if you mentioned this, I wouldn't be surprised if that entire scene with Doctor Strange and the Illuminati and then the Illuminati and uh, Wanda... Yeah. If none of them were ever in the same fucking room together. I don't think they were, because they're not I close they, together. I don't think any of them were ever shot in the same day. None of them interact. None of them touch each other. They're all right. s- pretty far away. Yeah, I don't think they were. I think it was a matter of like, okay, this day for you, this day for you, this day for you. Or like they shoot Krasinski 
six months after they already shot. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like right, yeah. Scenes, you know what I mean? So it's, it's very strange. I, I, yeah, that, that whole 20 minutes there, I feel like Okafor and, and Strange were the only two people that were actually there together shooting. Yeah. So it's... <sighs> It would be very cool to see someday like a behind the scenes documentary about how they made these films. I'm very curious to see that because I think they're pretty secretive about a lot of it. And of course they are. I mean, it's because like, it's making the sausage and not really making yeah, art of a lot of it. Yeah, it's more of like a te- technical feat than it is like an yeah. artistic feat. Which and, you know, actually, that's I, I don't want to say that because it is an art form in its own way. Editing, the editing is pretty impressive in that way, and also the effects are very, very sure as well. But some, but obviously, it's not the actor's favorite way to work. No, absolutely. I mean, not. look at look at. Uh, Oscar Isaac, after his Star Wars experience, <laughs> he did not want to fuck around with Marvel. No, he told him that I did. He did not enjoy the way that that uh, Disney did their Star Wars movies. He did not like how the story went. He didn't like how his character went. Okay. He didn't like how he was, you know, had to perform. Famously, Ian McKellen broke down on the set of The Hobbit, crying because he didn't know where he was doing. Right in front of a green screen, in front of nobody, and it's just like, yeah, that sucks. Yeah, it does. But yeah. it's it's also on the flip side, it, it's. A testament to your acting ability to pull sure, it off. Absolutely. Yeah. And 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 and, and uh, that's not to say I'm trashing the way these movies are made. There's reasons to make them. One, none of these actors are bitching about the fact that they're incredibly rich now. I looked it up <laughs> as a curiosity a couple weeks ago. The top ten highest paid actors of all time, not the not their grossing movies, but how much money they've made. And nine of them are in Marvel movies. Yeah. Nine of them. Nine of the top ten. The, top, the highest paid woman in film history is Carla Johansson. Yeah. And it's because she's made all the Marvel movies. Good for her. They can't bitch. Tom Cruise, I think, was the only person on the list who has not stepped into the MCU yet. Fun fact, guys. Do you know who the highest paid MCU actor is? It's Jeremy Renner. It's is it? Jeremy fucking I don't remember. Renner. It's Jeremy. I don't know how, but it's Jeremy Renner. Good for him. He took points in the right places, I, I guess. guess so. But, they, I guess but they, so. I mean, they've all gotten stupid rich doing these movies. I know. So they, no one gets to complain about that. Also, people go to them. Yeah. I mean, you want an audience. I mean, I'm going to go see it again tonight. Right. <laughs> we're, we're, we're talking about those three directors, right, who got to kind of do their own thing. All, the biggest three movies any of them ever made were Marvel movies. Taiki yeah. Waititi's biggest movie before this, or, or before Ragnarok, was... Uh, um, Jojo Rabbit. That was it. Happening. Made ninety million dollars. That was twenty nineteen. Yeah, but still like, ninety million dollars. That's nothing. Whereas Thor Ragnarok went over the billion dollar mark. Yeah, the budget on Thor Ragnarok was more than ninety million. That's what I'm <laughs> saying. Um, Raimi's biggest movie was Spider Man Three, and at the yeah. time that it was a big deal. Nowhere close to what he's going to make on Doctor Strange. I know. It's like well, yeah, I know. It's like. Gun didn't. Gun made all his movie on the guard. All the that's the, the weird. Movie. That's the weirdest thing is that Gun was able to hop into this franchise and just be like, "I'm running with it." You know what I mean? Well, good for him. You know what I mean? We're, yeah, but we're still. I mean, you're talking. That's p- people are going to see these movies. If you're a director, don't you want people seeing your movies? If you're an actor, don't you? I mean, that's that's got to be one of the reasons to do a Marvel movie. Is guess what? Everyone in the world is going to see your movie. You know, it's also expensive to run an Oscar campaign. Yeah. So, like, yeah, oh, you want to get an Oscar? Oh, I'll go do a Marvel movie real quick. Right. And okay. then, yeah, and then Cumberbatch was just nominated. <laughs> yeah, then, so, yeah, like, really, yeah. So, uh, good for them. It, yeah. It, it's smart financially, and it's kind of a win-win for, for everybody. It is. So, I, you, you don't hear the actors saying, I wish I never did a Marvel movie. No. Because they all get, you know, Robert Downey Jr. gets to make whatever movie he wants with his own studio now, because he's got that Marvel money. Yeah, you know, the funny thing is, that movie was Doolittle. Yeah, was fucking that was what he did. He took all. He took his Marvel money and sunk it on, on Doolittle, oh which means we God. might see Tony Stark again in the near future. <laughs> he couldn't go back to make Kiss Kiss Bang Bang too. Right? Yeah, he had to make fucking Doolittle. Right. You can't. Like, can't you do another uh, Sherlock Holmes movie or something? I would love that. Yeah, I would get, too. Guy Ritchie, where you at? Get Robert right? Downey Jr. Yeah. Uh, Robert Downey Jr. has some free time now. Jude Law. You get Jude Law's Dumbledore, but hey, I don't think that movie's going to work out very well. Doesn't so. sound like it. No, so I think he's done being Dumbledore. He's done being Iron Man. I want Holmes and Watson back so bad. Right. I mean, you, uh, you mentioned Cumberbatch. Good for him. But another Sherlock Holmes. There you but go. how many people saw Power of the Dog on Netflix versus are going to see Doctor Strange 2? You know what's funny? I think Sam Elliott helped out the, the views on Power of the Dog. Of course he did. After Sam Elliott said that, I'm pretty sure people were like, oh, let's should check this out. I mean, yeah. yeah. Let's see what the fuss is here. But, check out this piece of shit. But I mean, if you're Cumberbatch, yeah, it's great doing the Power of the Dog. I love the Power of the Dog, and he was great in it. Yeah. But at the same time, don't you want to make movies people watch? That's one of the – Robert Downey Jr. was an independent film actor forever. Uh, and then he did Sherlock Holmes and Iron Man pretty close to each other. And he was asked to like – Back to back. 
it, and, and they were like, why are you stepping into these, you know, big budget, you, totally different out of character for you. And he said, I want to make movies people actually want to see. Yeah. He, 2008 was a great year for him because he had Iron Man 1 nominated for Tropic Thunder and then going into Sherlock Holmes. He was on top of the world. He was. And then Iron Man 2 was falling after that. So yeah, he he's killing it. He was killing it. You know? Yeah. Killed it, I should say. He killed it. And again, he became stupid rich off of those movies, which he was not before. He, those, he was not making big budget, high income movies. Yeah. Um, and everyone knows him now in yeah. a positive way. Good Remember one. where his career was in like you know, the early 2000s, he was known as the independent actor who couldn't kick a drug habit. Gothica. Yeah, yeah. And, and so this really helped everything in his life by him doing the Marvel movies. It did. Well, guys, we're we're going for almost an hour now. Is there oh, already. Else, it's, is it's, there anything else you want to add about Marvel or anything else we in will, the future? Pro, we will definitely talk about Marvel more. I should say this. What do you want to see in a future Marvel film? What do you want to see? Not necessarily character-wise, but do you want to see anything specific, character-driven uh, films, more huge event action pieces, more camera work. What do you want to see in a Marvel movie? Here's what I want to see. Um, and I don't, just to give you an example of something that could happen, one of the reasons I, I liked Moon Knight was it was a small contained story. Okay. It's why I like Spider Man Homecoming. And I wouldn't mind seeing a 1950s set Captain America Steve Rogers movie Fuck. where where it's something. Give that to Spielberg. That's what I'm saying. It's, yeah. it's something small to where the whole world isn't on fire and the world isn't ending and aliens aren't falling out of the laser beam in the sky. You could do but it. It's something small and, and intimate that still that still you have this superhero doing super things that nobody knows about. Be like Indiana Jones. Yeah, something. Yeah, exactly. Something small instead of like, oh, the army's tearing down the forest, running through it to kill you everybody have to in kill, the city. Kill like rogue Nazis. Or we, right. Yeah, you yeah, don't yeah. have to level skyscrapers, but you have to. Yeah. But, you, but you still have a high stakes story involving these people. Up there, I would watch the shit out of that. Uh, yeah, I, I want to see more uh, tour driven Marvel films, which probably won't be the case. But at the same time, with Doctor Strange, it might yeah. be. It might be. Doctor Strange was a lot of fun, and I, and I hope it, it, I, it definitely looks like Raimi's going to come back and do another one, right? The way they left it at the end with the actual so. post credit scene. I hope so. Right. Oh my god, the Bruce Campbell. We didn't talk about Bruce Campbell at all. Oh my god, I love seeing Bruce Campbell. That was my favorite like stinger ever. Like at the very very end, like the second post credit scene is always bullshit. that. That was bullshit, and that was Kevin Feige saying. By the way, if you're still sitting here. <laughs> but no, but like, um, that's almost all the second credit scenes. All the second credit scenes are always like like the most pointless ones. Because people leave. Yeah, that's my favorite. <laughs> that's my favorite of all time. Just Bruce Campbell's Pizza Papa. And he says, it's over. <laughs> it's over. Yeah, oh my God. I loved it so much. It was, that's that's my that's my type of humor. And I will always have a soft spot for Bruce Campbell. Who the fuck doesn't love Bruce Campbell? Yeah, I don't think I could be friends with someone who said I really oh don't like God. Bruce Campbell. Oh my God, what's he saying? Watch yourself there, Dr. Strange. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God, it's so funny. But guys... Thank you so much. Uh, go watch Doctor Strange if you've not already seen it. Go watch it again. Sorry we ruined it for you if you haven't seen it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, if you haven't seen it by now, like, sorry. Yeah, I mean, like, you're that one person, and I'm sure Twitter... We did warn you, you not to watch if you haven't seen it yet, but we do recommend it. If Imagine you just somebody being stuck behind their computer, like, oh, no, they said don't watch, I can't move. Yeah, I mean, like, yeah, so <laughs> right. if that's the case, sorry. We find somebody to, you know, help you move your arms. But in the meantime, <laughs> go watch a movie. Thanks for being here, guys. Take care.